Hello and welcome to the Chinese city of Shenzhen, home of the telecommunication giant Huawei, to talk to the chairman of the board, Liang Hui. It's been a difficult year for this company. It's in the midst of a bitter trade war between China and the US, which has banned all governmental agency to use Huawei equipment on suspicion of espionage. And leaders, governmental leaders from all around the world are openly discussing their concerns about the trustworthiness of Huawei as they are building their 5G networks. Mr. Liang Wai, Chairman, of the Board of Directors of Huawei. Thank you so much for being on our program. I'm happy to be here today to talk to you. So Huawei is in the midst of a bitter trade war between China and the United States of America. Are you running scared by the end of this year? We're not concerned. The U.S. government's decision to add Huawei to the entity list has just created a lot of extra work for us. We have had to redesign some of our products and make sure our supply chain can continue to deliver products to our customers in a timely manner. Despite all the pressure, our top priority is to ensure survival. At the same time, we're also making sure our company keeps developing. We will focus on the entire process, from product design and manufacturing, to rebuilding our supply chain, delivery, installation and test, to ensure that we can provide the best possible products and services to our customers. But still, um, your founder, Mr. Zhen, said some months ago um, that Huawei is kind of like a plain heavenly hit <laughs> by a machine gun. So what do you say when you see this picture? And do you agree to that? Yes, I agree with him. The airplane shown in this picture kept flying even after being riddled with bullet holes. But it finally made its way back home. Huawei is like that airplane when we were added to the entity list by the U.S. government. To land safely, we have to solve many problems and patch up these holes one by one, like redesigning some of our products and ensuring supply continuity. But Mr. Liang, um, I mean, now China obviously responds in a way saying, we in China only want uh, uh, equipment uh, produced by Chinese uh, uh, companies as a response of the trade war. Uh, from the United States. Is this the right response in a globalized world? I'm asking you as a business person. At Huawei, we firmly support globalization, especially for our supply chain. If the U.S. government allows American companies to resume supply to Huawei, we will still buy U.S. components to build our supply chain. We are committed to globalization. And this commitment is never going to change. We don't want to close ourselves off for the sake of pursuing independent innovation and self-sufficiency. If we only depend on ourselves, we will not be able to compete in the future global market. So you say you have a deep interest really in keeping, keep working closely to the United States and, and share components and work closely together in the future? What I meant is that Huawei will still embrace globalization, no matter whether it is to work with companies from the US, Europe, Germany, Japan or South Korea. It's not up to Huawei whether we can use US products. Instead, it's the US government that is banning US companies from supplying Huawei. Mr. Yang, um, how important is the American market? At this point, we barely have any sales in the U.S. due to restrictions from the U.S. government. Our products and services are very competitive, and we're willing to provide our communications products to U.S. carriers. Now that our business presence in the U.S. is virtually non-existent, we can focus our efforts on the countries where our products and services are welcomed. More and more governments really express openly their concerns 
when it comes to trustworthiness uh, and espionage regarding uh, Huawei, especially uh, when they're talking about building or when you want to build the 5G net there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about these concerns and what you make of them? As for 5G, the world is now attaching more and more importance to it, thanks to the hype from the U.S. The truth is that Huawei is leading in 5G because we began investing heavily early on, giving us competitive advantages in 5G technologies, products and solutions. Germany has proposed that higher standards should be set, and these standards should apply to all players in the entire industry to ensure cybersecurity. I believe the best approach to this should be to develop cybersecurity management methods, rules, and measures based on facts and evidence. Maybe we can talk about Germany and the specific role in a moment. I just want to come back to the concerns for a second. So. Uh, People all around the world say, how can we trust a company which can be forced by law to deliver information to the state? What, make you, what do you make of these thoughts? First, Huawei complies with all local laws and regulations in every country or region where we operate. Second, Huawei only provides equipment and does not participate in network operations, so we have no access to user data. I believe different countries and regions are capable of managing their cybersecurity and data protection concerns on their own. Third, Huawei has made cybersecurity and privacy protection our top priorities. They are regarded as the foundation of our business operations throughout the entire process, from product design and manufacturing to service provisioning. But still, please let me uh, or allow me to quote from one of the laws at least taking place in China. Maybe they don't take place in, in Germany or other countries. We can talk about that later, but let me quote this very law. Any organization or citizen sh shall support, assist, and cooperate with the state intelligence work in accordance with the law. So can the state of China force you to give information which you would be able to collect, for example, in Germany? At the Munich Security Conference, Yang Tsiechu, director of the Office of the Foreign Affairs Commission of the CPC Central Committee, made it clear that China has no law requiring companies to install back doors or collect foreign intelligence. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang then reiterated this position at a press conference following a session of the National People's Congress this year. He stated, this is against Chinese law and it is not the Chinese way of doing things. We don't do such things now and we will never do them in the future. These are how Chinese officials interpret China's national intelligence law. Huawei has never received any such requests during our operations over the past years, and even if we received such requests in the future, we would not agree to them. Without any lawful requests, we won't do anything. Um, Mr. Liang, you have said, um, you talked quite positively about Germany, is, uh, how, or let's put it differently, how important is our Chancellor Angela Merkel for you um, as a leader and uh, how important are the signals she sends out when it comes to G5? Chancellor Merkel's decisions on 5G are based on Germany's national interests and development needs for the future. Under Chancellor Merkel's leadership, the German government's approach to 5G security standards does not focus on a supplier's country of origin, but treats all suppliers equally. This approach is good for the development of German communications infrastructure. So do you, do you consider Angela Merkel being a supporter of 5G? I can only tell you what I read in the news. There have been extensive discussions about the development of 5G infrastructure within the German government. 
These discussions are based on facts and evidence, which are good for Germany to develop its next generation infrastructure. Huawei is kind of leading when it comes to facial recognition and other technology. Is a company responsible for a possible misuse of the products, or do you say we just uh, pro produce the products and leave it to the people who use them? As a technology company, we focus on how basic research and technological applications can benefit humanity as technologies continue to evolve. With any emerging technology, there will always be debates. For example, facial recognition can be applied in many ways to improve social governance and productivity. In terms of security and trustworthiness, we have made cybersecurity and privacy protection our top priorities. In addition, as we enter into a digital and intelligent world, digital sovereignty will become increasingly important. It will be as important to a nation as its geographical sovereignty. All countries should pay close attention to establishing their own digital sovereignty. We have uh, some other big elections coming next year in the United States. What do you wish for? <laughs> We don't pay much attention to elections in other countries, because many of these elections happen every four years. Elections in other countries won't have much impact on our business strategies or operations. So you would say President Trump is not so important for Huawei? What happened with the Trump administration has some impact on us. But we are not very concerned about which government will be elected in the future. One last question. DW, the broadcaster I'm working for, is banned in China. Wouldn't it be great if people could watch this interview on Huawei mobile phones, for example? Yes, that would be great.